What we're going to be looking at here is a lump sum sale of common stock with preferred stock. And we're going to be comparing the proportional method versus the incremental method here for allocating this sale of a common stock and preferred stock. And for example here, Corporation A issues 1,000 shares of $10 par value common stock and 200 shares of $100 par value preferred stock for a lump sum price here of $200,000 that they're going to receive here. Now, this what, the, what we're talking about here is Corp A is going to sell these two different securities together here to a customer. Going, the customer is going to receive a thousand shares here of a common stock and 200 shares here of their preferred stock. Now what we have to do here is we have to look at the current market value of the stocks here and we're going to really be looking at two different cases here. So for case one this is where both of the securities fair market value is known and this is where we're going to use the proportional method here to allocate this sale here. Now in this case our common shares are selling selling at $168 per share here on the market and the preferred shares are selling at $210 per share here and that's the fair value of their market per uh, share here of fair value at the price per share here. And a case two here, this is where we're going to only know the common stocks market value and that's going to be known here at, in this case we're going to call, I uh, would say it's, it's selling here at $170 per share, the fair value here, this common stock. Now the value of the preferred stock, this is unknown. This is where we're going to be using the incremental method here to allocate this sale. Okay, so let's start here with case one where we're going to be using the proportional method here for the this lump sum sales here and this is where the fair value of all the securities are known here and this is where you allocate the lump sum received proportionately between the securities here so what we know here is the fair value of our common stock and our preferred stock here so uh, this is where the allocation is based on the fair value or in this case the market value of those securities so first off we have to determine the total fair value here and then the fair value for each of our securities so for our common stock we have a thousand shares here uh, issued here at $168 per share so its fair value here would be $168,000. Now for the preferred stock well we issue 200 shares here at $210 per share that's the market price here the fair value and that total amount here is $42,000. So our total fair value of uh, the two securities here is $210,000. Now to determine the proportional amount all we do is take the uh, fair value of the total fair value of the security here that we have here in this case common stock is 168,000 divided by the total fair value of 210,000 so that's the ratio that's going to be allocated to our common stock here 168,000 here it's a total fair value divided by the total amount of uh, between the two securities at $210,000. So that's the ratio we work with here and that represents about 80% here of the total fair value of these securities sold as a as a lump sum sale here. Now for the preferred stock you just take the 42,000 here its fair value divided by the total fair value here of 210,000 and that's the ratio we use here to 42,000 divided by 2 210,000 and that represents 20% here of this lump sum sale. So we've allocated a total 100 100% of this lump sum sale here by just taking the fair value of each of those securities determining the total fair value here and dividing the fair value for each security by the total fair value to determine its ratio. Okay, now to allocate the receipts between our common stock and our preferred stock. So what we know is our lump sum receipt here was $200,000. So the allocated allocated to our common stock, we just simply take our ratio up here times the $200,000 sum a lump sum receipt here, and we're going to determine that to be $160,000 allocated to our common stock. So you can see the ratio here. Just remember here, you take a $168,000 uh, uh, val fair value of our common stock divided by $210,000. Uh, the fair value of the total lump sum sale here times the lump sum receipt here at $200,000. Okay, and then to allocate our preferred stock, just take that ratio that we had up here to 42,000 divided by 210,000 times the uh, lump sum receipt here of 200,000, there we get $40,000 allocated to our preferred stock. Okay, so we've taken care of our uh, allocation here with the proportional method because we knew the uh, fair value here of both our common stock 
and our preferred stock. Now let's move down to case two here where we have to use the incremental method here for this lump sum sale. Now this is where the fair value of the security is known. In this case it's our common stock becomes our basis here and the remainder here uh, goes to the unknown security here, the preferred stock. So this is okay so allocation of the receipts here between our common stock and our preferred stock again our lump sum receipt is two hundred thousand here now we know what the value of our common stock is here uh, that was a hundred a uh, thousand shares times in this case it's going to be hundred and seventy dollars per share here it's market price that's its fair value here so we know what the uh, common stock would be allocated here at hundred and seventy thousand dollars so uh, this is again just the balance here goes to the preferred stock we're going to issue 200 shares here we don't know what its market price is or its fair value is so it's simply the difference here between what was allocated to the common stock here 170,000 and the total lump sum receipts here of 200,000 so the the difference goes to our balance in the preferred stock here of $30,000 so you can see here with the incremental method here we uh, we take our known securities here and it becomes our basis here and then the difference between whatever we've uh, our known in securities allocation and our total lump sum receipt the difference goes to the unknown security here in this case was the uh, preferred stock here for thirty thousand dollars okay now let's go up and let's record this and look at how we'd record this so first off again with our proportional method here well we're going to have our cash receipts here we knew what those are so we debit those for two hundred thousand dollars now we're going to have both issued here preferred stock and common stock on our on our as our equity here on our balance sheet so again for both cases here all you do is you take you set up your par amount here uh, you would credit the par amount here for let's just work with a preferred stock first here credit that here for twenty thousand dollars those were the two hundred shares here and remember the issued and it had a hundred dollar par value per share so we would credit our preferred stock here for twenty thousand dollars now the the additional amount that was assigned to our preferred stock here would go to additional paid in cocktail for a preferred stock here and that's simply the uh, total amount here that was assigned was forty thousand dollars we can go down here and look at it we allocated forty thousand dollars here and then our preferred stock uh, par amount here was twenty thousand dollars so the difference here between our forty thousand total allocated less the par value of twenty thousand gives us additional paid in capital here of twenty thousand dollars okay now moving over to our common stock we just do the same thing here we set up our par account here in our common stock we issued the thousand shares at ten dollar par value per share so we would credit our common stock here for ten thousand dollars now the uh, the balance here that we assign to our common stock goes into additional paid in capital for our common stock and remember we allocated a hundred and sixty thousand dollars here to the common stock so we would just take our hundred sixty thousand here less our par amount here of ten thousand so we get a hundred and fifty thousand here credit to additional paid in capital for our common stock so we had to set up here on this issue we had to set up here two equity accounts here one for a preferred stock here and one for our common stock and then we also had to set up those additional paid in capitals here for both our preferred stock and our common stock and everything here was based off that allocation here on a, on a going down here and looking at on a proportional basis here for both our common stock here and our preferred stock so if our debits here of our cash are uh, received here for this lump sum sale here balances with the credits here for both our preferred stock and our common stock okay now let's move down here and look at the incremental method here for our entries here now it's really the, going through the same thing here only it's a matter of how we ended up with our additional paid in capital amounts here so again um, we would have had uh, our cash let's start out with our cash receipt here again same amount here of two hundred thousand dollars here now just to go back here one thing here remember our common stock we knew what the market value here was hundred and seventy dollars but the preferred stock the, that we didn't know so this is where we use the incremental method here for allocating our stock so again we're gonna set up our preferred our equity account here in our balance sheet here for our preferred stock and also an equity account here for our common stock so again, uh, for our preferred stock, same as above here. We just for our 
we had to set up our par amounts here, 200 shares issued and a $100 par. So we would credit that here for 20,000. And then the remaining amount flows into the additional paid in capital. And this is really how we, the difference here between our proportional method here and our incremental method. It's how, what ends up here in the additional paid in capital and our allocations here. So again, we could look at uh, additional paid in capital got the excess. So in this case, our balance here to our preferred stock here was $30,000. That would we allocated total amount to our preferred stock. So we take the $30,000 here, um, dollars that total amount allocated less the par value here of $20,000. So additional paid in capital gets the remaining of uh, that balance of uh, the difference here between our uh, total amount allocated here and the par amount here at 20000 So credit our di uh, preferred stock here for $10,000. Now moving over to our common stock, same thing as we would we would set up our uh, par account here, a uh, thousand shares issued at a ten dollar par, so we credit that here for ten thousand dollars. Now additional paid in capital gets the difference here between our par amount here and the total amount allocated. In this case, our total amount allocated, well, that was uh, the, what the known amount here for our common stock at one hundred seventy thousand dollars. So one hundred seventy thousand less our par amount here of ten thousand gives us additional paid in capital here of one hundred and six. $60,000. Okay, so we've allocated both our preferred stock here and our common stock based on this, our incremental method here on our lump sum receipts here. Okay, so that's really the difference we just looked here to, at the difference between this incremental and the proportional method here and it was a matter of with the proportional method here we knew both the preferred stock here uh, value of the preferred stock or its fair value here and also the common stock its fair value but then when we move down to this incremental method here all we knew is the fair value of the common stock here and then the difference between the total cash receipts and the what we knew here for the fair value of the common stock got allocated to our preferred stock. But in either case here, we had to set up these separate equity accounts here for both the preferred stock here uh, as an equity account on our balance sheet here and our common stock here as an equity account on our balance sheet here. What remained the same between both the incremental and the proportional method here was again the cash receipts here, a lump sum sale. What had to change here is how we allocated both the preferred stock and our common stock. And then just remember here when you set up your preferred stock and your common stock you have to, um, you have to in this case it had a par value so you have to determine your par amount here in both cases and then the additional uh, amount flowed into the uh, additional paid in capital for each of those c accounts here based on the total allocation that we made here for each of both, for both the common stock here and our preferred stock. Okay, so that covers it here uh, for our purport, comparing our proportional method here with the incremental method here for allocating a lump sum sale. In this case, it was between two securities here and two stock securities here, the preferred stock here and our common stock.